Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the BizTech Academy. Steve here. This is our Excel series and a really exciting tutorial today. Just look at this. I'm going to show you how to create this candlestick chart that tracks the prices of stocks as well as the volume data at the bottom there. If you look, I've got Tesla on the, on the screen at the moment. But if I click this drop down menu, I can choose different stocks. Let's choose Meta or Facebook. And there you go. Dynamically, the price changes to Meta, the title changes, and the volume data changes as well. I can also change the date range if I want. Look, I can change the start date or the end date. And then dynamically, the data will all change to cover that date range. But not only that, I can also change the reporting period. Again, look, I can go down to weekly, or I can go down to monthly, or I can choose daily. And again, the data dynamically changes, but it's not just restricted to shares. Again, if I go down to the drop down menu, I can click on currencies. I've got the GBP or the pound against the dollar here. I've also got the euro against the dollar, but I've also got cryptocurrency. Look, if I drop down again, I've got Ethereum or Bitcoin. It's fantastic, amazing and dynamic. And I'm going to show you how to do this in six simple steps. The first thing we'll do is create the asset list. Then we'll do the search criteria. Then we'll source the pricing and the volumes for online. We'll then create the charts. We'll have a bit of a clean up, make sure everything's tidy and pretty. And then finally, we'll just add the calendar at the end and make all the dates dynamic. Okay, I do hope you like this video. And if you do, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and press the alert button. But in the meantime, let's crack on. So we'll start with the asset list and you can see that I've created three tabs in the open workbook. We've got charts, assets and data. So we go to the blank assets tab and we'll start by just adding a couple of titles. First of all, we'll have asset and then we'll just have ticker. We'll just format these. Uh, I like blue, black, ground and white writing. I'll just zoom in and now we'll add our assets. And we're going to start with our stocks. So we're going to have Meta, Apple, Tesla, Alphabet or Google, Netflix and Amazon. Highlight these and then go up to our data ribbon. And you can see at the top here, we have a list of data cards. We have stocks, currencies, and geography. And we're just going to click stocks, click on those. And you can see now it converts these particular company names into their stock information. And as you can see, if I click on the drop down box, there's a large data form here that has different data for these particular sockets. For example, prices, currency exchanges, and so on. We want the ticker symbol. So we'll go down to the bottom, find ticker symbol, click on that. And you can see then it adds the ticker symbol for each of these particular stocks. So we're going to use this for searching the prices later. Now we're going to add some currencies. So we'll add pounds. We'll add the euro, both against the dollar. Then we'll add some cryptocurrencies, both Ethereum and Bitcoin. Just highlight these again and go down to the drop down menu and choose the ticker symbol again. And that's it. We have our assets in place. OK, that's the easy start done. But remember, this asset list doesn't have to be restricted to stocks or currencies. You can also add bonds and ETFs if you want to. OK, let's move on. And now we're going to input the search criteria. So in terms of criteria, we want four. We want the asset itself. We want the start date and the end date. And we also want the period we're going to measure. So whether it's daily, weekly or monthly. Uh, so we'll just list those down and I'll just highlight them again or format them in my favorite blue and white. OK, let's just zoom in and we'll have a look at these in a bit more detail. So the first thing is in terms of the assets, we need to create a drop down menu for all the assets. So to do that, we just go to the data ribbon, data validation. And under the validation criteria, just choose list. And then we're going to select the source or the range that we want to have on the drop down list. And we'll go to our asset list and we'll just click the ticker of all of the particular assets. I'm going to add a few more rows here just in case we want to add some more later on as we go through this activity. Was that done? Press OK. When you press OK, you can see now we have a drop down menu of all the particular assets. Great. OK, in terms of the start date, we can just choose any random date. For now, I'll just choose the 1st of January 2023. And in terms of the end date, I think we'll have the use the today function and we'll have this updating regularly to today at this point in time. So equal today, open and close parenthesis, and there's today's date. We want to format this, so just use the shortcut control and one. And you can see it opens up the format styles menu. And we'll just go to our custom date menu. And I particularly like this particular format. We now want to look at the period. So to do that, we just need to create the three periods. So we'll go back to our asset tab and we'll just create a drop down list of three periods daily, weekly, and monthly. And then we'll go back to our chart tab and we'll put another drop down menu into data, data source, into list. And then we want to choose the source of those three we've just added. So go back to our asset tab, highlight daily, weekly, monthly, press OK. And now we have a drop down list with our periods. OK, that's it. The search criteria is in place. So we'll just do a bit of formatting, just make the dates to the left hand side. And then we'll just put a ball around each of these particular criteria. 
Okay, so with the assets listed and the search criteria in place, we've done one and two. We now need to move on to step three. And step three is where we add the prices and the volumes. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So to calculate the prices and volumes, we're going to use the stock history function. And I'm going to show you and explain this to you by using the formula builder in the first instance, and then we'll actually create it by just typing it in. So if I open up the formula builder, you can see I'll type in stock history, find it, and I'll drag it over so that we see this a bit more clearly. As you can see, there's four primary criteria for the stock history. That's the stock, the start date, the end date, and the interval or the period. And as you'll remember, we've created that search criteria in the previous step. As you can see here, asset, start date, end date, and period. And as you can see, there's two other criteria required for the stock history function. There's the header, and the header is just the names or the titles of the columns and the, of the data that we're going to um, source. And also the properties, which is the data itself. And this, for example, is the date of the price, the price itself, or the opening price, the closing price, the daily high price, the daily low price, and so on. And we'll show you how to use that now. But first of all, we need to fo focus on the interval, because as you can see from the interval description, the interval is de denoted by a number. It's not denoted by uh, a, a text of daily, weekly, or monthly. Daily equals zero, weekly equals one, and monthly equals two. So what we need to do is create a formula that then converts our drop-down menu of daily, weekly, monthly into zero, one, and two, respectively. And to do that, we'll create a little data area, and we'll then zoom in and we'll create the interval or the period, as we've called it. And to do this, we're going to nest an if statement. So we're going to go equal if, and then we're going to say if the period or the cell that we have the period in on the chart tab equals an inverted commas daily, then print zero. Then a nest another if statement inside and say if the same data, so charts and then C5 equals weekly in inverted commas, then convert it into a one. Otherwise, it should be a two. Then close the couple of parentheses and you can see then it equals the number that was required. So in this particular instance, we have weekly highlighted and it shows a one. If we change that now to daily, it converts it into a zero. And if we go back and change it into monthly, it converts it into a two. So we have a field now that we can use putting the interval or the period into the stock history function. So now let's move on to the function itself. So we'll type in equal stock history, we'll tab it across to open the function, and then we add the stock. So we go into our asset tab and click on the cell that has the stock. In this particular case, we have meta. Then we want a start date. So we click on the start date, then an end date. So click on the end date. And then in terms of the options, we click on the cell that says, says one, two, or zero that we've just created, because that will then select whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. Now we want to show the headers. And then we want to choose the data that we want to sh show. And we want the date, so we put in a zero. We want, in this particular order, we want the opening price, the high price, the low price, and then the close price. So we put in zero, comma, two, comma, three, comma, one. And we need that particular order for the candlestick chart. So once that's in place, just close the parenthesis, press enter. And now what happens is that Excel turns around, it searches for the data. And what we can see here is that we have a list of dates. We have an opening high, low, and close price uh, for the meta stock. If we change the... If we change the period to daily, for example, we now have daily prices. And again, if we change it to weekly, it will then go to weekly prices. Now, as you can see, if we change the actual asset itself, so let's move away from Meta and maybe into Apple, it will then change the stock price completely to the Apple price. So all we need to do now is repeat this for the volume. So we'll do stock history again, open the parenthesis, and then we go back to our stock, as we did before, our start date, our end date, and then our period. And then we want to put the header again in place, but this time we want the date, so zero, and we want the volume, so five, and then close the parenthesis, press enter. And then we have our dates, and we also have our volumes. And again, if you vary any of the criteria, so the stocks, so for example, if we go back to meta, it changes the volume. If we change the period again, it would do the same. And that's it. We have our data created. It's dynamic. Every time we change any of our search criteria, the data changes. And we can now move on to step four and use this data to create our charts. So to create the chart, it's really important that we make the range that we use for the data dynamic. And to do that, what we shouldn't do is just highlight the range like I'm doing here. If you just highlight the range with your mouse, then all you're going to do is restrict the range that is selected to that that you selected right now. You need to make sure that it changes every time you change the search criteria. 
And to do that, we need to use shortcuts. So to highlight the range, go onto the first cell, which is B8, where the date label is, and then use the shortcut, Shift, Control, and right arrow, and that will take you to the end of that data, and then Shift, Control, and down arrow to take you to the bottom. This means that whenever you change that criteria, uh, the chart will automatically update for this particular new range. Okay, once we've done that, and we want to create the right chart, go to the Insert tab, and then on the Insert tab, choose where it says Waterfall Chart, and on a third of the way down, find the candlestick chart and click on that. That will open up a basic candlestick chart, and we'll just move this around and make it bigger so we can play with it. And the first thing we'll to do is to make the candles bigger. So double click on the dates, the horizontal axis, and where it says axis type, change it from automatic to text axis. And as you can see, that makes the candlesticks more thicker and the right size. Now we want to make them the right color. So we'll just choose one type, for example, the white ones, right click on it, and it says format up bars. And we want the up bars green. So we'll go to our solid fill change it to green, and we'll do the outsize or the borders, we'll make them black, and then just close the, the menu. Then do the same with the black bars, right click, format the down bars, and what we want to do is make these red, so we we'll choose a solid fill again, make it red, make the border then black, and then just close the menu, and we have our candlesticks. What we now want to do is just make it format a little prettier, so click on the edge of the actual cell, and we'll move a gradient fill, and we'll play around. I think we'll stick with the gray. Blue's okay, but I like the gray, so we'll stay with the gray. And now we'll do the border of the actual chart itself. So double click on that. We want a black border, so solid line and black. Then we want to go to the shadow and click on shadow. We'll just choose a default one, the one at the top left. And we'll also go rounded corners. So go back to the paint pot menu at the bottom. You can see rounded corners. And there we have it. We have our chart. We just need to play around with the title a little. So what we'll do here is we'll make this dynamic as well. So under our data area, we'll use the concatenate function to make a dynamic title. And to do that, we'll go equal concatenate, and then we'll go over to, go over to our selected ticker. So on our main chart tab, we'll go to where it says Tesla. We'll click on that as a source cell. And then with a separator column, we'll add in inverted commas, a space, and price history. Then close the inverted commas, and then parenthesis, press enter. And then we have a dynamic title. And what you can see here is if I now change Tesla to Meta, in that particular cell that we've created the concatenate function, that now changes to Meta price history. We just need to add this into the chart title. So click on the chart title, then go to the formula bar, and then equals, and that cell where we have the title in place. And that will now insert that, and we'll have that constantly being dynamic. We'll just make it bigger, make it 24. We'll also make it bold. And now we have our chart. We have a candlestick chart that's dynamic. And changes any time. For example, go back to Tesla and you can see that the title also changes to Tesla. Okay, so let's cut that, put it onto the chart tab to get it out of the way for now, and then we'll look at the volume data. So for the volume data, same principle, use the shortcuts, shift, control, and right, and then shift, control, and down, and go to the insert tab. We'll just look at the recommended charts here, and I think what we'll do is we'll choose the stacked area. That looks okay for a volume chart. Just drag it out to make it workable. And all we need to do here is actually change some of the cosmetics. So we'll put a gradient fill with a gray again on the inside. We'll do the borders again with a solid fill and dark, and we'll also put a shadow on them. And then we'll just make the title bigger, make it 24 and bold again. And there we have our volume chart. We'll again cut that across, put it back onto our chart tab, and there we have our charts. Okay, so our charts are now created. They're dynamic in terms of the data, dynamic in terms of the titles. Uh, all we need to do now is just do a little bit of cleaning up and make them presentable in the workbook. So to clean things up, we'll just drag these two charts across. We'll move the volume data to half the height, and then we'll drag it to the bottom of the price data. And then what we'll do is we'll drag the, the, the candlestick chart to the right, and then right-size the volume chart to the same width. And there we have it. We have our charts in place. And as you can see with the charts in place, if I play around with some of the data, they're dynamic, they change in line, and it looks very good. Okay, so we'll go over to our asset tab. I think in the assets, there's nothing really needed to be done. No, this is okay. So move on to the data tab, and you can see here, we'll just drag the dynamic title over, and we'll just give it a title. So drag that over to the data itself, and we'll just make it a, a chart title. And then we'll just make the headers of the columns in the data uh, blue and white. Probably gathered my favorite heading color. Okay, and that's it, all the formatting in place. 
We've just got the final thing to do now, step six, and we'll just add the calendar and make the dates dynamic. To add the calendar, we need to put an add-in in place, an external third-party application that creates the calendar on the particular Excel workbook. And to do that, we need to use the developer tab. Now, if you haven't got the developer tab open or available to you, then if you're on a PC, just right click and then where it says ribbon or customize ribbon, click on that and you'll be able to change the developer tab I'll show you in a moment. If you're on a Mac like I am, then what you would do is click on the three dots of the top green bar and then go down to where it says ribbon. And then you can see on the right hand side, and you'll be able to see this on a uh, PC as well, is it says developer and you just click on that, tick it open, and then you'll have the developer tab open on your particular workbook. So click on that then, and then just go to add-ins halfway across. And you see then there's a store option to go onto store, go onto store and search for calendar. When you search for calendar, you'll see probably at the top something that says mini, cal mini calendar and date picker. Just press add to that and then press OK to the license. And then you'll find the calendar then will open up on your workbook. Drag it in place, put it to wherever you want it. We're going to put it to below our criteria. And then whenever you click on the start date or the end date, you can choose from the calendar a particular date. It will then ask if you want to replace it. You say yes. And then you have a new date. And the calendar then is inserted that particular new date. You can do it for the start date or the end date, as I say. What we'll do, though, is we'll just zoom out and we'll correct the end date back to today's date. Because I think, ultimately, you probably want to keep today's date as an end date and have your search criteria always looking at most current data. And there you have it, the calendar in place and the dates dynamic. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. It just shows you some of the extremes that Excel can go to when it pulls external data and uses that for manipulation. Okay, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>